Okay. First of all, since you've seen the answers, everybody knows the right answer. But let's go through it. Now, remember, the toughest thing about exponents is just like trig, there's more than one way to do these problems, right? And often, you may start down a path and the person or persons with whom you are working are working on a different path. And then both of you have a crisis of confidence because you're not sure who's doing it right. Everybody understand? But if you both carry on down your respective paths and you go to the end and you apply all the exponent laws correctly, you will find that you both get the right answer. Everybody understand? So even when I'm working through this, you might be like, holy crap, I have no idea what he's doing. And then at the end, I'll say, there's the answer. And you'll be like, oh, that's what I have. Everybody understand? Now, the mistake that a lot of you make in all math is you forget that thing that I've said a few times. Don't forget all of your math. Don't go into each exponent question looking at it the same as the one before. Because the questions aren't the same. What is the same? All the math that you can do. Right? Okay. So when I look at this first one, what I see is this section right here has a negative exponent which means that whole base could come up here right now at the very beginning. So that's what I personally did. So I rewrite negative x squared y to the fourth. And that is multiplying by 2x to the fifth, y to the fifth, to the fourth. Okay? And then I didn't touch negative x, negative 1, y, negative 2. Now, the next thing, because I said I reminded you, you can't forget any of your math. So we have to remember bed mass. This exponent right here should be dealt with now. So I'm going to leave in red everything I didn't touch. And in blue, this becomes 16 x10 or x20, y20. Everybody cool? Now, the next thing I see is hey, wait a minute, a bunch more negatives, negative exponents, right? So, where will those guys go? Again, I'm going to leave in red anything I didn't touch. Oh, yeah, that's cool. So I've got negative x squared y to the fourth. Didn't touch them yet. But I brought these up. x to the one, y to the two. And then I had this blue one, 16x20, y20. Now, please notice... This negative doesn't go anywhere, does it? Because that negative is not part of this base, is it? So I still have a negative on the bottom, which is technically negative one, yes? All right, now I have all my exponents up top and I'm ready to go. X squared, X to the one, X to the 20th. How many x's is that? Two plus one plus twenty. Twenty-three. X to the twenty-three. Four y's, two y's, twenty y's. Y to the twenty-six. Negative one times sixteen. Negative 16, and all of that is over negative 1. 
what does negative 16 and negative 1 do when they divide? And there is your answer. Everybody cool? Now, could I have done that a different way? Of course. I could have taken this negative 4 in here and messed around. Like, I could have done all kinds of different paths. Okay. So let's look at the next one. Is there simplifying I can do to the yellow? Is there simplifying I can do to the green? Sure. Does it matter which one I start with? No. If I start with the yellow, is that negative part of the base? Why, Austin? Because Austin's right. Is that yellow negative part of the base? What makes it part of the base? It's inside the brackets, yes? What do we know about a negative base to a pause or an even exponent? What happens to it? If I have a negative and I square it, that's an even exponent, right? What do I get? Positive. So what's going to happen to that negative x once I put it to the fourth power? It's going to become x to the 16th and y to the what? Negative 16. That's a problem, but we're not going to deal with that yet, are we? Because we got a whole crap load of y's down here in the green. Numbers with numbers, letters with letters. What's negative 2 times positive 2? Negative 4. What is x to the 1 times x to the negative 4? x to the negative 3. And y times y to the 5th? y to the 6th. Now, numbers with numbers, letters with letters. Are there any other numbers? No. So I have negative 4, right? X's. 16 and negative 3. What do I do? It becomes X to the 19th. <coughs> because two ways you can think of it. 16 minus minus 3. Or shouldn't that negative 3 move up here and become positive 3? Either way you think about it is right. So there's x to the 19th, and then y's, negative 16 and 6. You can either do negative 16 minus 6, which is negative 22, or you can think of it this way. Since that's a negative, it's in the wrong spot. It should be down here, shouldn't it? Right? Or Sorry, not 22 yet. It should be... 16. And now what do I have? Y to the 22. Now, I heard a bunch of people talking about the answer here because the answer puts the negative right in the middle. That's okay because, like I said, you can't forget all the other math you know. What is negative 1 over 2 as a decimal? Negative 0.5. What is 1 over negative 2 as a decimal? Negative 0.5. What is negative 1 half as a decimal? Negative 0.5. If all three of these things equal that, then all three of these things are the same. But what is that? Positive 1 half. Do I continue, or seeing those couple of tricks, do you want to go back and relook? Do up to four? We're happy with three? Three's not too tricky. All right, 
for four, I would do everything inside and then cube it at the end. So two. And notice I changed the order just to make it alphabetical. That's the only reason. What is two times negative two? Negative four. A to the fifth, A to the third, A to the minus one is A to the seventh. B to the negative four, B to the negative four is B to the negative eight. Yes? We're all happy with that? And all of that is cubed. Now, I have a choice. Can I simplify that and then cube the answer? Yes. Can I take that three and put it to everything now? Yes. Either way works. I personally don't like moving that three to that many things. I would continue to simplify in here to get one over two, negative. Three minus seven is a to the fourth. And B, one minus minus eight is B to the ninth. Yeah? And all that is cubed. Now, do I need that one? No. So now all that is cubed. Nine times three is B to the 27th. Negative two cubed is negative eight a to the 12th. There's only one negative. So most textbooks and most professors and teachers and things would say move that to the middle. I don't care. If it's easier for you to keep it down there and think of it down there, leave it down there. Okay. Take it, Ken. Of course, if there's two negatives, then it's positive. Do you want a little bit of time now on your own? Go. Oh, barf. I don't. I got to ref the rugby game in it. And when you're a ref, you don't get that nice scrum time to cuddle up and warm up. You just have to stand there being cold. Run around with me. That's what the princes get when they referee rugby. What? No, today is... What is today? I don't know. Today is... Oh! Pink camouflage.
and then you have the two times 32. Don't clap, don't clap. Okay. I know you were. That's why. I just like to clap. My wife doesn't let you move. And then you can get back to it if you need to. I'm going to do something with five. I'm going to do five a little differently than the way I've been doing it in the past. Okay? I'm going to move everything at the beginning before I do any collecting of anything. Okay? So, I see an X there. It's got a positive exponent. It's okay, right? So that X is going to stay. That negative 4y, is that okay? No. So it's going to move to here. Right? Then, I'm keeping my 2x squared y to the fifth, because that's all positive. And this is all negative, yes? The green. So the green moves up. x, sorry y cubed to the fifth. Now I've got all positive exponents, yes? Now, obviously, I need to do this exponent first. x. 2x squared y to the fifth. Negative 32 x to the fifth, y to the 15th, over y to the fourth. x. Two more x's, five more x's, x to the eighth. Five y's, 15 y's, y to the 20th. Two times negative 32, negative 64, over y to the fourth. Four y's down there, which means they're going to cancel. And I'm going to lose four here. 16. Now, please listen to me. Every year, I get the same complaint in this unit. Why do you do each question slightly differently? Because each question is slightly different. Right? You apply the laws as needed in each question. This green part, that's a gift. Because it's a negative 5, you know you can move that entire thing right now because of the brackets. How many times have I said, what's the base here? Why am I saying that? So you can start recognizing that this whole thing in here is one thing. You can move all of it at once. Everybody cool? 
Now over here, yellow, green, blue. Where should you start? You can start wherever you want. But one of those three colors will make your life simpler if you do it first. Green, because you can eliminate one of those X's. Because down at the bottom there, that's just X to the eighth, right? So slow down. Think about the question before you attack it. Most of you, in my years of teaching this, most kids bring that four in right away. And that means bringing that four to one, two, three, four, five, six spots. Is there a chance you screw up one of those six? Yeah. Now, if you do the green first, you eliminate an X. And then if you simplify inside, you're only bringing that four to three things. Okay? Go back to it. Or are we ready to see six? Okay. Sorry. Oh, that's supposed to be a three. Now on this page, nine and 10 are pretty bad. Really? No, 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 that makes sense. Because number one is the first one you've approached that has everything all mashed together. And as soon as you get one or two of them, you start seeing the way to do it. Number two messes with kids a lot because the negative X to the positive four. That's not annoying at all, Manru. That's not annoying at all. Not even a little. Um, yeah. I would like to offer you all a small piece of advice. Because again... In my experience, those two negatives out front really mess you guys up. So here's what I like to do. I like to forget about them. I do all of this work, get an answer, and just say it's negative uh, U to the seventh. This isn't right. 
over 4UV. I do all my work and that's where I get it. I see one negative there and then I bring this back. Negative, negative, O. Oh, it's all positive. Understand? When the negative's out in front like that, I like to forget about it till the end. That is a tiny pencil. Rugby doesn't get canceled. We're not soccer players. Hey, all right. Rugby gets canceled only for two reasons. One, the ground is so frozen that you cannot stick a key into it, which means it's rock hard. If the key goes in, the game goes on. Or it's snowy and you can't, and the only reason we cancel that is because you can't see the lines. I have played on fields with such big puddles and been on the bottom of rocks, face in water, not able to breathe. And having to wait till guys get off of you. Yes, you sit there. Which is why when I ref when there's a big puddle, I blow the whistle very, very quickly. It's not fun. Because you're on your face... And it's not like you can take a breath before you go down because as soon as you hit the ground, somebody's on top of you, blowing all your breath out of you, and you're lying there in a puddle. You lie there and hope. What? I would blow the whistle immediately and start screaming, get off. Then it would be a scrum for the team going forward. But our field doesn't get puddles. It's, it's good. The sprinkler heads are trouble. But really, when you think about it, the field is 100 meters by 70 meters. 700 square meters. A sprinkler head is about 4 centimeters, 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters. Your chance of hitting the sprinkler head are very low. You're more likely to get hit by a car crossing the street to the game than you would be to hit, hit a sprinkler head. You don't think so? Okay, let's have some fun here. Because it's math class. You're a liar. 70 meters by 100 meters, right? Right? So that is 7,000 meters squared, yes? One meter square is one, uh, what's 100 times 100? 10,000 centimeters squared, yes? Right? So 7,000 times 10,000. Seventy million square centimeters on that field. A sprinkler head is maybe twenty-five centimeters square. Right? It's not. It's maybe that big. So you have seventy million possible centimeters, and there is about maybe. Six sprinkler heads on that field. 150 centimeters squared. So out of that 70, that is like saying, and I'm talking about puddles, I'm talking about sprinkler heads. No, you're more likely to get hit by a car than you are to hit your head on a sprinkler. Look at those odds. Now, it's not your body doesn't matter. If your body hits a sprinkler head, you're going to go, ow. If your head hits a sprinkler head, then you could be in trouble. 
And even if you want to factor in the size of your body, what's going to hit the sprinkler head? Your foot first, right? Your foot is what? Three centimeters wide by what? Or sorry, three inches wide. So nine centimeters wide by 25 centimeters long. All right. There is 13 minutes left in class. There is four that I haven't gone over. What would anyone like to see? Nine? Nine and ten? All right. Seven. Again, yellow, green. I can do stuff with both of them right now. Green is negative 32, A to the 10th, B to the negative 5. Yellow is negative 2, A to the negative 1, B to the 6th. Yes? Now, there is positive 16, yes? 32 divided by 2, and they're both negative. Yeah? Okay. Here, where should that A go? Up, because he's negative. I already had 10 up there, so I've got A to the 11th. Yes? Right? Where should this B go? Why? Because it's negative. I've already got 6 there, so I've got B to the 11th. That's it. 9. For 9, remember, I'm going to forget about that negative. So I'm going to work here. U to the negative 2, V to the 4, over. Now... Should I bring this 3 all the way through this mess? No. I should simplify there first. Numbers with numbers. What's negative 2? What is negative 2 times positive 2? And then negative 4 times negative 2? Positive 8. U2, U5, U3. U to the 10th. V squared, V to the 1 is V to the 3. V to the 3 is V to the 6th. All cubed. Now that cubed only has to go to three things. I've still got a negative out front. U negative 2, V4 over. 8 cubed is 512. U30, V18. What's the only thing there that needs to move? Just the, two, the U's. So that is going to go where? Down. And I've already got 30 down there. So I've got 512 U32, 4 there and 18 there. So I can get rid of those 4, right? Which means I can get rid of 4 of those. V14, I left nothing up top. What must I write there? 1, because this obviously doesn't equal 0. So 1 goes there. Now, I've taken care of everything. What was I leaving till the end? The negative. Are there any negatives left? So the whole thing stays negative. Okay? Over here. I would deal with that, but I'd forget about my negative. A3, A5, no other A's. A8. Negative 2 and 4 
is 2 and 5 is 7. Negative 2 times negative 2 is what? 4. Over. Negative 2 to the 5th is negative 32. A to the 25th. There's 25 A's down there. There's 8 here. Can I get, which ones can I get rid of? What goes? All of those. And how many of these go? 8. So now I've got 17. No other B's, no other A's. But this can be dealt with. What's that? 1 over what kind of 8? Negative 8 right now. 1 B7, so I don't write the 1. A17. But there's a negative out in front. So negative, negative makes what? Positive. B7 over 8 A17. Everybody good? All right. Listen, please, because it is 923. Tomorrow is cumulative. Measurement and trig. Friday is a quiz on exponents. Okay. And what else have we done? Just exponents. I. And then Friday... We will go over the cumulative and do the next lesson, which is very short and easy, which is why it's going to work out nicely. Okay?